Hey, we back chilling with Tupac. This man is multimedia. Not only is he a recording artist, he's also an actor. But before we get into the acting, I, w- I want to say, um, how did you first get down with Suge Knight and Death Row? Suge, I used to always see Suge. When they did the um, soundtrack for Murder Was The Case, yeah. it was when I was going through all those legal problems. And he was like, yo, give me a song, dog." And I was like, yeah, you can get whatever you want. You know, gave him a song. And it was like the most I ever got for a soundtrack. I mean, the most I ever got for a song. It was then their album budget. I mean, I think I got like something like two hundred thousand or one hundred fifty thousand for one song. And the song they didn't even use it, but I still got paid. You know what I mean? I got paid for everything I did on the soundtrack. And I think I did like two songs or something. But and I remember when he did it, he did it like yo. It wasn't even like because he was jocking me. He did it because he knew I was having crazy legal problems. And I, and I was a man. He had asked me to come to death row, and I was like, I ain't ready. And instead of like taking it personal, he just did that for me, and I. Appreciate that. So when I'm in jail and I'm sitting there, what made me do the death row thing, because I was really going to quit rapping. Mm-hmm. But then Puffy and Biggie and all of them came out in the vibe, mm-hmm. and they lied, and they twisted the facts. And all I wanted to do was end everything. Yo. All I wanted to do was end everything and walk away from shit. You know what I mean? Like how Scarface and all them niggas yeah. do. I want to get out the game. I'm trying to get out the game. They want to dirty up my memory. They want to dirty up everything I worked for. So it made me come back. Instead of quitting, it made me come back more relentless. To destroy my what, what, what in fact is my comrades. To destroy what, what used to be my homeboys. My, what I worked for. My closest clique. You know what I mean? I worked hard all my life. As far as this music business to make it East Coast, West Coast love and make everybody feel comfortable. And I dreamed of the days when I can go to New York and be comfortable and they can come out here and be comfortable. So it's not like I'm, I'm when people say, why are you doing it in East Coast City? It's not like it's, it's not silly at all. But you can't disrespect the love. You can't disrespect the peace treaty. That's just like when the Indians made deals with the white dudes and they would just come and rape their women and shoot them up and then leave. No, the Indians ain't going to love white people no more. They're going to want to kick up some dust until we think about it and renegotiate the terms of the treaty and that's what i'm talking about that's where y'all at right now we gotta have this beef and this war and these words and these this this dialogue until we can renegotiate the terms of the treaty i love the east coast i'm from the east coast but they have to understand that you can't just be saying shit about us and think that we're not gonna take it personal you can't just be calling us fakers and pretenders and non-creative motherfuckers and we can't freestyle and this and that and this and think we just gonna be like oh that's cool we love them because they started it hell no we're gonna take it personal just like a kid would when it's bigger brother who ain't doing shit is all of a sudden you know that's just like the, the, the little brother making hella cash and the bigger brother's like you owe it all to me mm-hmm. that's wrong you know what I mean don't be mad because the little niggas coming up you know what I mean now is it now do you think the east coast west coast rivalry is like both coasts or cause a lot of people think it's more bad boy death row it is. it's not both coasts what it is was that the east coast the people on the east coast are real proud real cultural and real strong just like we are on the west coast and so what happened was Biggie came at a time, just like what Hitler did with the Jews. Biggie came at a time when they were open to somebody saying, we're the master race and these guys are nothing and they're pretenders and this is why we're not making it in the business because of these guys. This is why we're not doing nothing because of these guys. So the East Coast really not hating us, really not knowing nothing about us, but just listening to their supposed to be leader, you know, listening to the person that was representing for them. Like, yeah, okay, well Biggie, you know, you know, he from Brooklyn, who you know what I mean? And that's what happened. And so all of a sudden people saying stuff that they didn't even know was what they was doing was like ending our, our culture when we started. We held it down for y'all. That's how I felt. I, I was in tears like, what? When y'all was out there on some... You and LL was was dancing with, with women in silver suits and niggas was on some other shit which I'm not mad at because I might do that one day. And I love them niggas, you know what I mean? But I'm saying when you was being creative and wanting to try other boundaries, we was holding it down with this hardcore shit. Yeah. It might not have been what you wanted, but it kept rap alive for years. It kept money coming in. It let them notice us. So how could you look at us now and be like, this ain't good enough? You know what I mean? We're broken home. Y'all ain't teach us this. We ain't come from where you, we ain't got no subways or graffiti. We learned this, I mean, in spite of the gangs, in spite of all of that, we came up with this culture. You know what I mean? So I felt like we never got what we deserved. And I took it personal because I'm from the East Coast and I know about that culture, but I know about this culture because I was here when it was getting put down. So now I'm doing what the East Coast would have did if the West Coast did this to the East Coast. I'm riding for my side. You know what I mean? You wrong. This is not right. Recognize us. And the only way the East Coast gonna recognize us is for us to do it on records, by money, by sales, and by representing it. Just like KRS One. When PM Dawn got on stage and he had talk shit about him, what did KRS One do? So why are people telling me I'm wrong for doing what I'm doing? They love KRS One. He is hip hop, am I correct? That's true. Right, so I'm hip hop. 
I'm mad at Biggie, I'm rushing the nigga. What's the problem? <laughs> That's Biggie real. East Coast separate themselves from Biggie. We do shows in the East. Everything is beautiful. But so far, the East Coast has been with every all interviews I read, every letter I read. Niggas is like, fuck Tupac, Biggie, Biggie, this, Biggie, Biggie. Like, like, he's representative of the East Coast. So that's why I attack as though I do. Because I'm a general and I'm a smart general. And I'm not going to attack at no blind soldiers. I'm going to attack at those attacking me. Only reason people is mad now is because I came out of jail and made this shit a reality. When I got out of jail, the West Coast, East Coast shit was really starting. California love what I was saying, put it down. And now them niggas is mad because money is fucked up. Attitudes have changed. It's not as safe as it used to be. Niggas gotta think about their business steps, and that's what I wanted to happen. Now let's go to the table. Let's talk. Let's make peace. Let's work it out. Let's get a community to money. So you saying with a conversation with guys like Puffy, Biggie, and that whole uh, East Coast? Sit down and conversate with Puffy or Biggie because that's like Scarface sitting down with the dude he overthrew. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They not on my level, but I can sit down with the OGs from there, which we are doing. Mm -hmm. People don't even know we not beefing with the East Coast. We starting Death Row East. With Eric B, all the OG niggas out there from the East Coast, we got Kane, Christopher Williams, all these artists, we trying to get Bobby Brown, all these artists, we trying to put the East Coast death row just like the West Coast death row and make it major, you know what I mean? Right, but we not doing that until we get this business settled, and even while we doing that, we trying to get the Wu-Tang niggas, because I love them niggas, I feel as though they represent the East Coast how we represent the West Coast, and I love them. You know what I mean? So that's what we trying to do. We not we we doing it like if we, if everybody raps is what they really think, then everybody should understand what I'm doing because it's gangster shit number one, it's war shit number two, and it's all by the rules of the game. You know what I mean? I'm doing shit. I'm calling for dialogue. I'm I'm gathering attention for dialogue, which is what you do in a struggle for power. That's real. That's real. We still chilling with two pockets intense. I love this, brother. I like this, my man. Keeping it real. We're gonna come back with more Tupac right here. In 1991, Tupac got his first real taste of trouble when he was stopped for jaywalking in downtown Oakland. According to Pac, the police officers didn't take a liking to his name, so they said some unfavorable things. Pac in return responded, and the result was him being arrested and brutalized. This incident led to him filing a $10 million lawsuit against the city of Oakland. It wasn't long afterwards that Tupac released the first of his six albums. The first was entitled Tupacalypse Now, and it highlighted Tupac's passionate political and thug life side. Songs like Trap, While Politically On Point, stirred up much of the controversy when it depicted an Oakland police officer being shot at the end of the video. This particular song caught the attention of Dan Quayle, who expressed his outrage. Other songs like Brenda Got a Baby brought attention to the emotional and heartfelt side of the rising star. Tupac gained national fame when he played the role of Roland Bishop, a violent, insecure, short-tempered, psychotic individual in the blockbuster movie Juice. Initially, director Ernest Dickerson had invited Digital Underground's Money B to audition for the movie. Tupac went along for the ride. Once there, he read the part Cold Turkey and was hired to play his role, which left many wondering if Tupac was acting or just being himself. As Tupac's popularity began to soar, so did his troubles. In the summer of 92, while attending Marin City's 50th anniversary, Tupac and his entourage had a confrontation with some old acquaintances. During the ensuing fight, a gun was drawn, shots were fired, and a little six-year-old lay dead as an innocent bystander. Tupac's brother Mercedes, who at the time rapped for the group Tony, 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 and later for Thug Life, was arrested and charged. Eventually, he was let go for lack of evidence. Tupac Tupac later found himself embroiled in more controversy when a Texas cop was shot and killed. The widow of the slain officer filed a multi-million dollar civil suit against Tupac, claiming that it was his music and lyrics that influenced the young perpetrator to kill. If that wasn't enough, also in that year, Tupac, while visiting the set of Fox TVs in Living Color, had an altercation with a limo driver. The result was him being arrested and charged with assault. Eventually, the charges were dropped. Seemingly, wherever Tupac went, trouble followed. First, Tupac found himself being charged with assault after he and a group of friends beat up the film directors known as the Hughes Brothers. This incident stemmed from him being fired from the movie Menace to Society. 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 Society.